let's talk about estimates and sample sizes. Uh, we're going to talk about two different types of estimates, and the first type will be estimating a population proportion. And then in the next section, we'll talk about estimating a population mean. So let's get started. A couple of definitions to get started. A point estimate is a single value that's used to approximate a population parameter. So remember the parameters are for the entire population. So for example, uh, let's say we have a sample mean, x bar. A sample mean is the best point estimate for the population mean. A sample, pro a sample proportion, we use p hat to show it's coming from a smaller sample, is the best is the best point estimate of the population proportion. So the sample mean best approximates the population mean, and the sample proportion best approximates the population proportion. Okay, let's do a really quick example for this. A survey finds that 60% of 1,501 randomly selected adults prefer Toyota Camry over Honda Accord. The sample proportion, p hat, is 0.6 for 60%. But remember, this is a sample because it was a smaller survey. This isn't all of the adults in the entire world, so it's p hat. It's a sample proportion. The best point estimate of the population proportion is the sample proportion, is 0 0.6. Another definition. We're going to be talking a lot about what we call confidence intervals. And a confidence interval is a range of values that's used to estimate, estimate the true value of a population parameter. We use, we're going to use the notation CI for short, for confidence interval. A confidence interval is always associated with a confidence level which is a probability that the confidence interval actually contains the parameter in question. So let me show you what I mean by this. For example, the 95% or 0.95 confidence interval estimate of the population proportion P is 0 0.677 to 0 0.723. So let's talk about what that means. So I'll say it in words and then I'm going to show you a picture. This means that of all of the samples that we would take, 95% of them should contain the actual population proportion, so the true P. 95% of them should contain the actual population proportion as long as P's between the, the interval is between 0.677 and 0.723. A confidence level of 95% says 95% of our samples should result in a confidence interval that contains the true value of P, which is the population proportion. So here's kind of a picture. On the top, you see our bell graph for let's say all of our proportions. And below it, you see where all of the confidence intervals from lots of different samples have been taken. So those are 20 different 90% confidence, 95%, sorry, confidence intervals. Notice the vast majority of, majority of them contain the population parameter. So mu right there at the top, is our population mean. All of them except for one actually contain the population mean. So most of them should contain that population mean. Okay, a couple more definitions. A critical value. A critical value is the number on the borderline that separates sample statistics that are likely to occur and those that are unlikely to occur. So for example, a lot of times we're talking about uh, the Z value that separates likely from unlikely. And uh, the Z value here, we would use that notation Z uh, sub alpha over two, where alpha is our, um, our confidence level. So let me show you an example of this. 
let's find the critical value, the Z value, corresponding to a 95% confidence level. So what this means is, where is the Z value where 95% of your uh, param of your, I'm sorry, 95% of your values would appear in the green section right there. So would where would the Z value be where 95% of your, let's say, proportions would appear in the green? So here's how we're going to find that. Alpha is 1 minus 0.95. So we're going to say alpha is 0 0.05. Alpha over 2 is... 0 0.025. So we have 2.5% uh, in the far top and 2.5% on the far bottom of our graph. Z sub alpha over 2, or another for this one, in other words, Z sub 0 0.025 is the Z score with a 0 0.025 probability to the right. And that's the same thing as a 0 0.975 probability to the left. Remember from a few sections ago, when we use the notation Z sub a number, so Z sub 0 0.025, that indicates that the 0 0.025 is the probability on the right-hand side. So the 0.975 is on the left-hand side. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to our standard normal distribution chart and we're gonna find the probability for 0.975 and the z-score that goes with that. So here's our probability chart. And let's see, there is 0 0.975. We got really fortunate that it was spot on. 0 0.9750, and that corresponds to the row for z is 1.9, and the column for z is 0 .006. So we have the z-value 1.96. So our z-value corresponding to a 95% confidence level, so 5% split into two, 2.5% two on the top, 2.5% on the bottom, gives us a z-value of 1.96. That one's super common. It's going to appear in a, lot of your, in a lot of your homework problems, so you might want to write that down. Let's do a couple more that are also really common. So let's do uh, find the critical value corresponding to a 90% confidence level. So 90% of our values should appear in the green. That means that 10% are in the red section, so 5% in the top and 5% in the bottom. In other words, alpha is 1 minus 0.9, so 0 0.1. Half of that is 0 0.05, so we've got 5% in the t far top and 5% on the far bottom, on the far right and far left. And Z sub alpha over two is the Z score with 0 0.05 to the right. In other words, 0 0.95 to the left. So again, let's see where that is. So 0 0.95 is not quite on here. We have 0 0.9505, and point nine, right next to it on the left, 0.9495. So we're gonna sort of split the difference here. 1.6 is definitely the correct row. And the column, 0 0.05, it's close. Actually, if you plug this into your TI-83 or 84 calculator, the value isn't 1.65, it's actually 1.645. Usually, if you use anything close to 1.645, like 1.64, 1.65, you'll be fine. We're going to use 1.645. Okay, a couple more. Critical value corresponding to a 99% confidence level. So 99% of our values are appearing in the green, which means 1% appear on the far right and the far left red sections. So there's our 1%. That would be, mean a half a percent on each side. So Z sub alpha over 2, Z sub 0 0.005, we're looking for 0.995 to the left. And when we do that, we find the Z value of 2.575. Okay, let's extend this, what we're going to do with this. We're going to do, when we construct confidence intervals, we need to talk about margin of error. You've probably heard that phrase before. 
the formula we're going to use for margin of error is z sub alpha over 2, so those z values we were just finding, times the square root of p hat times q hat over n. Now kind of like in our binomial distribution problems, p and q are related to each other. They're complements of each other. p hat is the, is the sample proportion, and q hat is its complement. So the margin of error is the maximum likely difference between the observed sample proportion, p hat, and the true value of the population proportion, p. Let's do an example. In a study of 1,228 randomly selected medical malpractice lawsuits, it is found that 856 of them were later dropped or dismissed. What is the best point estimate for, of the proportion of the medical malpractice lawsuits that are dropped or dismissed? Okay, point estimate, let's see, we're looking for proportion. So of the randomly selected ones, the best point estimate for the proportion would be p hat 856 out of 1,228. In other words, 0 0.697. This is the best point estimate of the entire population's parameter for the proportion. Okay, so remember that number that the p hat or our sample proportion is 0.697. Now let's do something with this. Let's construct a 99% confidence interval estimate of the proportion of medical malpractice lawsuits that are dropped or dismissed. So here's how we're going to do that. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to find the z-score, the critical value, associated with a 99% confidence interval. Find our critical value. So just like we were doing a minute ago, 1 minus 0 0.99 is 0 0.01. Divide by 2, 0 0.005, and this is the one we found that was 2.575 z-value. Okay, second step. Let's find the margin of error. So the margin of error, we're going to use that formula. It's the z value we just find, found times the square root of our sample proportion times the complement of that divided by n. So in this case, 2.575 was our z value. The square root of p hat we already found on the previous page was 0 0.697. Its complement, 1 minus 0 0.697, is 0 0.303, and then divided by n, n is all of the um, study participants, so 1,228. And we plug that into our calculator, we get a margin of error of 0 0.034. Okay, so here's how we're going to use that. Our true proportion should be somewhere in the middle of the sample proportion plus the margin of error and the sample proportion minus the margin of error. So the true proportion should be between 0.697 plus the margin of error, 0 0.034, and 0.697 minus the margin of error, minus 0 0.034. When we calculate that, we get that the true proportion should be somewhere in between 0.663 and 0.731. So I'll say that one more time. That means that 99% of the time our true proportion should be somewhere between 0.663 and 0.731. Okay, one last uh, conclusion to make from this. Does it appear that the majority of such suits are dropped or dismissed? In other words, at least 50%. Well, since the proportion of suits that are dropped or dismissed is usually between 0.663, or 66.3%, and between 0.731, or 73%, then yes, it appears that the majority of such suits are dropped or dismissed because 0.663 is the smallest that it usually is, and that's 66% are dropped or dismissed. A comment on notation. 
there are several really common ways to write a confidence interval. So if you're studying in your book or you're looking up things on YouTube or you're writing for an exam for your homework, one way to write a confidence interval is with an inequality like we did here. P is between 0.663 and 0.731. You can also use interval notation. So if you look on the right hand side, parentheses, uh, 0 0.663 comma to 0 0.731, that's an interval. Um, and that interval is the left-hand side is p hat minus the margin of error and the right-hand side is p hat plus the margin of error. So writing it in interval notation is perfectly fine too. And then the last way is quick and concise but a little bit more confusing. It's your p hat, it's your sample proportion, 0.697, plus or minus the margin of error. So give or take the 0 0.034. That's the last way to write it. Okay, determining sample size. We can go uh, kind of backwards and we can figure out what the sample size should be uh, given a lot of this previous information. So let's suppose that we will conduct a survey for a political candidate to determine what percentage of support she will have in an upcoming election. In other words, what proportion of the voters support her? How many? The candidate wants a 1% margin of error and a 95% confidence level. What sample size do we need to meet these parameters? So there's gonna have to be a little bit of algebra involved here. The sample size is N. We know E, she told us she wants E to be 1%. With a 95% confidence level, we can find our critical value Z. Uh, we need to solve for N. So in order to do that, here's some algebra. We're gonna square both sides to get rid of the square root. So that'll have e squared equals z squared times p hat times q hat over n. Then we're gonna multiply by our denominator. So multiply both sides by n to clear the fraction. <laughs> and then finally, I apologize for algebra. We're going to divide both sides by that e squared so that n is isolated. So here's what we get. n, the sample size, is equal to z squared times p hat times q hat divided by the margin of error squared. Okay, let's do a quick example. Oh, one quick comment, by the way, before we do our example. In this example, they didn't tell us what the sample proportion is. So if you don't know the sample proportion, whoops, it went away. If you don't know the sample proportion, use p hat is equal to 50% or 0 0.50. That means that q hat is also equal to 0 0.50. So just use 50% if they don't tell you. Okay, so for this one, we did a few uh, examples ago that the 95% confidence level has a Z value of 1.96. So our N, our sample size, is gonna be equal to 1.96 squared. We don't know what P hat is, so we're gonna use 50% or 0.5. So 0.5 times 0.5 will be 0.25. And the margin of error is 1%, 0 0.01 squared. And when we perform these calculations, we get a sample size of 9,604 folks. If the sample size is not a whole number, always round up. So no matter what decimal you get, even if you get 